Hey everybody, Jake here with TrendSpider to go over the midweek video touching on the broad markets and a few cool case studies um, into midweek and then kind of looking into the week ahead. So um, we have SPY, QQQ, IWM, and then a few case studies we're going to do are Disney, SLV, GLD, and then we're going to also look at VIX. So starting off with SPY, you can see that we did have this pullback. Uh, the last two days, not a shocker to see where price finally caught a bid. Notice what we've done here is we've anchored the volume weighted average price uh, created by Brian Shannon and Alpha Trends uh, from these important areas. So this one important area that I have anchored is the breakout candle from April 6th. And you can see how well the price bounced off that. And you can also see the confluence within this anchored uh, volume by price from February 19th. This was ultimately the high before we reversed um, into March. So what we can see here is we've got this confluence of anchored VWAP and anchored volume by price showing this big chunk of volume here. Um, and we actually had this down here as well. So, you know, pretty much the same exact setup where we had this big chunk of volume, we had this anchored volume weight average price, and then we had um, this, uh, this area where the price finally caught a bid and then started moving up, which is where this breakout candle actually bounced off of on the 6th. So going into some other examples, you're going to see this setup across the board. Now, does that mean that we're going to bounce from this area? No. But it means that this has been an area in the past, price has found some buyers at, and naturally this is where the point of control is and we bounced right off of it today. So things to keep in mind going forward. So we go to the queues. We can see something a little different than SPY, but very similar where SPY had not really broken out this much through the resistance line so it didn't get this perfect test like we had on the queues. Yesterday SPY was at its trend line and it broke down but we do have this huge base that was created um, pretty much from all of these people accumulating since this area here and then this area here because we're pretty much anchoring the volume profile from this February 19th high like we did on SPY and these are the two areas at which price really started to find some buyers here. And that's why we've got this big chunk of volume here uh, labeled base created. So as the price continues down, will it catch a bid at this big area of where most of the people are holding at? We could also call this the break even zone. <clears throat> you can see here, anytime the price gets back to this area below, we're going to be pretty much back to break even if anyone who bought here because before everybody was holding out a profit here nicely from this zone as the price moves back down people stop holding um, at a profit because they lost their margins up here from you know the price moving down so as your profit margin gets back to zero or you're back to break even some people are going to stop selling because they're not able to sell at a profit anymore that dries up the supply and then supply and demand kind of have their own battle here at the break-even zone. And so we'll just have to see what happens from there. Um, touching on IWM, we've got a pretty much similar setup here. Same thing. I anchored this volume weight average price um, from this kind of uh, this pivot from the initial move up from the bottom. And then we've got this, this bottom before moving up to the next high. So this is where I anchored the volume weight average price from, taught by Brian Shannon. Um, and this is exactly how he teaches uh, how to use it. You want to anchor from these these reversal points or these uh, trend change or sentiment points, i.e. a gap down or a gap up. In this case, I'm anchoring it from the bottom here, and then I'm also anchoring it from this, uh, this pivot before the next uh, high uh, when we moved up from the bottom. So... If we remove this, we'll see that we did bounce right off of that. This has been an area of interest before. This isn't the first time that price has found buyers at this area. Very similar to kind of what we saw on uh, SPY. So going into uh, you know the, the rest of the week, this is an area that is going to have to hold in order for buyers to really remain in control. 
if we drew a trend line here, you'll be able to see that this trend line is pretty much holding right around here as well. We pretty much closed right at it. So not only do we have confluence of the anchored VWAP, the anchored volume profile showing the point of control here, but also this uh, trend line support. So you have to remember, the more participants in a stock, the more action you're going to get. So, you know, we're, we're not just looking at the anchored VWAP traders or just the people looking at this big volume block. We're also taking into account that people who just drew this, uh, you know, trend line here, or if you wanted to draw it from here and connect it here, you know, we're kind of at this area where the price is breaking down. We've got these two uh, kind of parallel lines. They're not exactly parallel, but you'll see here that, you know, this is this is an area where buyers, uh, excuse me, sellers came in who were looking at this trend line. Um, so, you know, you had different participants doing different things. You had trend line watchers actually probably selling this because we broke down. And then you've got anchored VWAP watchers from the April 3rd low watching the price to see if it holds. And then if you're using the anchored volume by price, you would have seen that there was a ton of volume holding in this area. So, um, you know, we'll just have to see what happens the rest of the week. Um, if this did break down, you, you do have a lot of shares holding below since this high. So a lot of people are going to pretty much just be holding it break even. And if you're holding it break even, it's hard to sell unless something material changes in the thesis, like uh, who knows, whatever that would be, whether it's with coronavirus, whether it's, you know, maybe from bankruptcy starting to accelerate, that changes the status quo. But for now, you know, this is holding at the anchored view app but it did break down through that trend line support today. Going into the VIX, uh, VIX is one that, you know, technical analysis is a little difficult to do on VIX, but um, people still do it. And so I did want to mention that, you know, if there were people just drawing simple trend lines today, you would have seen this breakout here. Does that mean that's going to continue to break out? Not, absolutely not. But, you know, it is something to keep in mind that people probably saw today. Um, this is a pretty obvious trend down, so it's not shocking that people saw this uh, this uh, excuse me descending wedge or falling wedge trying to form here, and then you've got the breakout. Um, but if you go back in time on the VIX, you know this thing like it likes to do that. Uh, it likes to just kind of uh, continue down. Notice here we tried to break out from this area. It kind of looked like the price wanted to break out here. And then uh, and let me draw this a little better. It kind of looked like the price wanted to break out here. Maybe you got some wicks and then it didn't. So, you know, just because technical analysis isn't maybe used as much as it is on uh, like overall stocks compared to VIX, it still very much can be used to draw trend lines on that type of thing. Um, so I uh, just wanted to point that out for those that were looking at VIX in more of a bullish manner. This would be your thesis here for that breakout. Going into a couple case studies, and these really aren't, you know, too case study -y since everything looks the same right now. But you do have Disney here bouncing off these areas. Notice on Disney, I did anchor the volume weight to average price from these two kind of capitulation candles, if you want to call them that. And notice how well the price has respected these Alpha Trends anchored VWAPs multiple times, you know, as the price has tried to grind higher. So the fact that this did bounce today is interesting. Doesn't mean that it's not going to continue down into this zone or even continue down below it. But, you know, it is a pattern that has repeated in the past. So it's worth taking a look and keeping in mind that, you know, it could repeat in the future. But for every pattern in the market that repeats, there's one that doesn't repeat. And uh, so that's what makes the market what it is. Um, and sometimes that becomes self-fulfilling. If you have enough people looking at something and it breaks down, just because it broke down brings in sellers because so many people were watching that, or it breaks out because so many people are watching that breakout. So that is Disney. This is a crucial area to be at right now, kind of like everything else we've talked about. You've got a lot of people pretty much holding here at break even. So that is going to you know, dry up the supply as the price gets back down into this area because nobody is really holding at a profit right now. If we move on to SLV, you can see here that SLV is uh, kind of on the other side of this uh, this zone. 
you can see that we actually caught a bid in SLV today, kind of bouncing off this demand zone. Remember, if the price moved down into this area, this would be your break even zone. But notice this is clearly a demand zone because the price is catching a bid here. Um, we have this volume gap shown by the anchored volume by price from this uh, February 24th high. But what you can also see is we have a price gap as well. So you can have a volume gap without a price gap. But in this case, you've got the volume gap up here, meaning there's not a lot of shares above until you get to this supply zone around you know, 1580 or so. So you've got the volume gap and you've got an actual price gap above. Um, so that's something to definitely consider with that. But then if you go to GLD, another you know, uh, metal ETF, we've got our friend uh, Golden Pelican over here. You know, you can see him flapping his wings right here, trying to break out. Um, you can see, though, as much as this formation is hilarious and probably annoying at this point because I've posted it so many times, uh, the, the main point of this is we want to see what happens within this symmetrical triangle. You can see if we anchor the volume by price from this February 24th uh, period here, a majority of the volume is holding here. If we move this and let's say we want to measure where where the volume is holding since the bottom here, you'll see that we can pretty much see that all of the volume is creating this shelf here. And so, you know, will price continue to break out? Who knows? Uh, but, you know, the point is you can draw whatever you want. This can be a duck. This can be a bird. Or it can be, you know, the Loch Ness Monster, which one of our affiliates uh, created the other day. It doesn't matter. The main point here is seeing this kind of flag right here, right? You've got this big move up. You've now got this consolidation period. And even if we start it from here, you'll see that most of the volume is holding right in this area. If, if volume was not supporting price here, you know, this would probably be a, a slightly different uh, view. But the fact that a lot of uh, the volume is pretty much aggregating right in this area creates kind of a base for price. And so will that create enough of a base for price and will demand either outpace supply enough or will supply decrease enough for the price to move up? Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, but that is SLV and GLD both kind of showing this uh, big block of volume using the anchored volume profile. Last one I want to go over is GE. This has been one that has been just absolutely destroyed. And honestly, it's gotten destroyed worse than Boeing. If you look at like relative to when Boeing hit its lows, GE is actually hitting new lows here. Um, and you'd think with Boeing being the way it is, it would be hitting um, new lows as well, but it's actually not. So what's interesting to me is um, one, how badly beaten down this has been. Two, the fact that there's still divergence here. Now, um, you know, if you're if you're trading options or any type of um, security that has decay, uh, that would likely just be options in GE. Um, you you are not going to be able to really play this divergence and and make money off of it because you have to worry about time decay. But if you're just holding common stock here, you know this is one of those things that. It's kind of like um, any any other game, like casino game you play. If you play a casino game, you generally have to stick to rules. If you're a trader, you have to stick to some type of plan. So if you're a divergence trader and you see this divergence where the price is hitting these lows, the Williams percent range is still hitting these higher lows here, it's a question of you know what happens. Um, I personally am actually stuck in some options right now, and I'm just going to hold them. Uh, I sold some of them to uh, to enter something else. I um, uh, entered SLV today, but you know, for example, that's just me. If Dan came on here and mentioned his trades, he would uh, be mentioning that he went short the market. And so, you know, there are completely different ways that everybody that works and is a, a founding team member at TrendSpider. There's everybody is a trader, so everybody uses the platform differently, and that's the beauty of it. The way that I'm using the platform um, in ways is the same as Dan or Brad or Zach uh, who are on our team or Rustland. But, you know, uh, that doesn't mean that this is the only way to use Trendspire, meaning using the anchored volume by, volume by price or volume profile isn't the only thing you can use on Trendspire or using the Alpha Trends Anchored View app. You can also use the market scanner, the strategy tester. Let's say that you've got 
a, a strategy that somebody's told you about and they claim that it's 95% accurate. Okay, well, let's test it on the strategy tester and see what, what it shows. So, you know, make sure to take advantage of these things, not just, you know, what we go over sometimes in the videos, but these are going to be some of the things that really are useful on the chart. But using the strategy tester and using the market scanner are just as important and just as uh, useful when you are day trading, swing trading, or even investing. Let's say that you want to scan for a long-term MACD cross on the monthly or something. You can use the platform to do all those things. So um, thank you so much for listening in tonight. Once again, uh, pretty much the takeaway for today is this case study that's pretty much across the board, which is this SPY setup where you can see that price is really getting to this big chunk of volume here. We saw it on SPY, we saw it on IWM, the Qs, pretty much everything. So, um, you know, this does not mean that this is bullish into tomorrow, but it does mean that we have found a level of interest where buyers have stepped in for now. So once again, make sure to check out Trendspire and all of the different features you can uh, take advantage of and get an edge in this market. And um, everyone have a great rest of the week and thanks for watching.